Me when I'm too cool for school. Fuck these motherfuckers, I'm too cool for these motherfuckers. This is Ryan Trout. I'm me when I need permission to ask. Cool May I have your permission? And although you might not believe it. Me on Friday and Saturday nights. Time to party with the Zaza. Instagram comments. Me when I'm in rehab. Oh me when I can't brag about my Made party. him this way. Me when I love the flashlight. Yeah, I love the flashlight. And what if I told you that this Vaping is my passion Could explain this <laughs> Ryan's early content was characterized by a strikingly lucid reaction style Me when I'm in a bad mood at work God fucking damn it Why do I have to work? As well as his frequency of uploads Me when I'm high Me when I'm in a pool with Me when someone A time someone. when his comment me section was I'm filled with, with an encouraging Albeit semi-ironic endorsement of his content. Gonna hang out me because of my autism. Fuck you, boring ass, fake ass. And that's on period. But over time, Ryan's content started to get darker. I always say I'm gonna take it easy, but then I never take it easy because I'm the booze god. I like to drink a lot. Ryan appeared to go through several breakups. Me when my ex-boyfriend wants to get back with me. Fuck you, you're an ex for a reason, you fucking bitch. Engage in deviant behaviors. Me when I accidentally shit myself. Oh god. Damn. And even develop an alcohol problem. Me when I'm the booze god. I'm quite the boozer here, man. And then he me just disappeared. Me. That is until a few weeks ago when he apparently emerged from a sober living facility. Me when I do ketamine therapy. Oh my god, I feel like I'm cured from my depression. Might I add, apparently to the protest of his handlers. Me when I got kicked out of rehab for flexing my party status. What the fuck, man? I actually liked it here. It appeared that the ego boost precipitated from the unnecessarily positive comments had finally boiled over, causing the fame-induced Icarus story that we've come to know all too well in our modern society. Me when I'm compared to Kanye West. Hell yeah, I'm compared to one of the wildest entertainers of all time. One of the best videos of all time. I just told you who I thought I was. A guy. I, I see good things about Hitler also. Ryan had flown too close to the sun which cast him into a sea of negative digital footprint and deleterious behaviors. And that is the story so far. Bitch, get your stank. Or is it? Upon a second glance, this narrative is full of holes. Hey, in this video, I'm gonna be telling you how you can become famous, so let's get into it. Do something that's really funny, like something that like, you really embarrass yourself to do that would make a lot of people laugh. Early posts seem to indicate that Ryan was always interested in drug use. Me when I get drunk, I'm finally free! Plus, Ryan has a connection to World of T-Shirts. got Louis Vuitton because I'm banned from the Gucci store. The leader of a network seemingly full of autistic alcoholic people hooked on partying. Never give, never give a homeless person money. Me whenever I try to stay sober. Well, Scooby Doo. What if I told you that there's a man heading this group who, dare I say, appears to be pimping these autistic kids out for fame. Making Josh rich. Michael Quinn's not a good guy. I'm just trying to make a living. He's taking advantage of World of T-Shirts. You look paycheck. I love paycheck the fucking paycheck. And what if I told you that Ryan himself is a microcosm of social issues that can explain the modern political landscape and even the military industrial complex? Who even is Ryan Trout? What's his agenda? What's with the edging stuff? You know, when I was a kid, when someone was edgy, that meant they liked dark humor. Now it means they like to masturbate for a while. Ladies and gentlemen, this is. Before you ask what this video is, I'd like to just take a second to say what it's not. It's not... Oh, my God. The mic seems really low. There's a woman and a child outside. Is that it? Oh, that's way too far. The love of a young mother. Is there a more pure thing? No. But uh, I don't want it in my fucking video. I'll tell you that goddamn much. Before you ask what this video is, I just want to say it's not going to be a voyeuristic expose called The Downfall of Ryan Trout that makes a mockery and a spectacle out of this man's life. That's not at all my intention with this video. It is important, however, to very briefly summarize the people uh, involved in Ryan Trout's life. And no, I'm not talking about the numerous political enemies that Ryan has made over the years. Trump supporters be like, Trump's always right, we must support him no matter what he does. I will be voting for Biden again in 2024. And frankly, Tucker, every video he posts to TikTok, it's the same video over and over again. This is me when I'm Ryan Trout. 
My name is Ryan Trapp, and I'm a stupid dum-dum. First and foremost, there is World of T-Shirts, a.k.a. Joshua Block. World of T-Shirts is one of the few variety accounts on here. Let me show you how I WAP. Uh, another young autistic man with a binge drinking problem that Ryan appears to be friends with. I just saw a World of T-Shirts interview. Wow, he is impressive. Around two or so years ago, Josh began heavily drinking and developed an online following, voyeuristically encouraging his antics. A subreddit dedicated to him has grown to nearly 20,000 members. New York! He can now be spotted roaming around New York City, frequenting the city's nightlife. Basically a manic, alcoholic, neurodivergent kid with a massive TikTok following. And then there's Michael Quinn, a man who claims to be the usher to Josh Block's Bieber. So don't let others get you down, babe. You're marvelous. Believe in the Quinn effect. I believe in you. He is, in reality, a low-life New York City hot dog salesman. <laughs> I wrote this a while ago. He is, in reality, a low-life New York City hot dog salesman, blatantly attempting to profit off Josh and occasionally trouts I love Ryan. I think he's a great kid. But I have more views than he does. I'm showing Josh how to shit. He treats this whole unfortunate situation like it's a reality show. At one moment, he's getting drinks with Block. The next, he's trying to get him sober. You get this situation. And I am in no way compromising my journalistic integrity by saying that this guy is overtly a scumbag. I'd beat the fuck out of you if you were here right now. You're an ugly nigger. And what's even more saddening is that all of this has been serialized on subreddits and wikis and been dubbed as lore. It's treated as like mythology to a cinematic universe when it's all very real stories about some people's life falling apart. One time, a guy actually tried to lure me to go with him. Like outside of Oh, Disney a guy? World. I was at Disney World one time and a guy actually tried to tell me to go with him. So he might have been trying to carry that me like a pedophile. Oh my, oh no, did you go with him? No, I was so scared to death that night. Hear me out. In freshman year of college, I was very briefly enrolled in a class about Vietnam taught by a veteran. And although he was a, an American veteran, he was very well schooled in the sufferings and the struggles of the Vietnamese people. Very anti-war, this professor. And something that I found very interesting about his perspective is that he was opposed to all movies about Vietnam, essentially. Even if the director had an anti-war message. Even movies like Apocalypse Now or Full Metal Jacket that satirized the war, he didn't like them. Why? It allowed the viewer to sit back in their couch in this, like, contempt of the conflict while simultaneously being completely separated from the suffering of the Vietnamese people. They got to just sit in their couch like, oh, this is disgusting. This is terrible. Oh, they're not doing anything about it. They're actually enjoying the righteous indignation that they get from watching it on their screens. My teacher called this practice the pornography of war. And we've observed in society that the widespread availability of television has uh, expanded this war pornography beyond the bounds of just art and movies. War is on the news. You can watch people dying on the news. This eventually led to the 24-hour news cycle and this modern culture we have of pundits arguing over the tragedy of the week, all while the news companies profiting off of it. And here's what's very interesting, but not talked about as much. With the advent of social media, the internet, and widespread consumer recording devices. Strangely, this has also brought in a decentralization of the news cycle, allowing viewers to make and view a show about essentially anything that they want. You wanna watch a guy with Down syndrome give you the weather in Nova Scotia, Canada? Welcome to my show, my name is Frankie McDowell. There it is. You wanna watch homeless people freaking out at drones? That's available to you. You wanna watch an autistic guy go crazy and become an alcoholic on camera? Well, here you are. There's just so much random stuff out there about anything. So the internet has led to a move from the pornography of war to what I would like to call the pornography of the absurd. And this is where we find our little buddy, Ryan Trout. People have always been interested in gossip and drama. The Beatles broke up. Did you hear what John said? What about George? What about Paul and Ringo? But with the internet, the tabloid culture of the late 20th century has evolved into something more grotesque. If you open up the comments to Ryan's latest video, it'll be full of people saying, Ryan, what happened? I miss the old Ryan. And although they uh, claim to be altruistic in nature, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that these people 
are entertained by the perceived undoing of this man's life. Early videos uploaded to Ryan's YouTube show a general through line in his content. He's always wanted to raise awareness for autism and he's always embraced the status of being a living meme. And I just feel like at this point, it becomes compulsory for us to discuss autism and its potential effects on Ryan's life. I say that because there's so much talk in the comments and even there's a couple other videos about Ryan Trout and World of T-Shirts. Frankly, I can't find any sober-minded discussion about the autism of it all. Probably because people are, you know, afraid of offending people or speaking out of line. And I understand that entirely, but it seems entirely relevant to this conversation. So not lightly, not making fun. Let's ask the question, what is autism and what role might it play here? Autism's causes are not well known, nor is it a very strictly categorizable disability. It's honestly very vague in nature, and that's why it's called a spectrum. And if you're curious as to why I'm calling it a disability, I'll let Ryan handle that. When someone says autism isn't a disability, it's just a different ability. No, autism is a disability, you fucking idiot. I, I, I mean, I would have said it a, a little nicer personally, but that's his prerogative. It's not my place to say. Autistic people are people, so... One limitation about speaking about it in such a broad category is that it's like it has such radical different ways that it manifests in, in different personalities. However, I would like to make some broad general observations that are backed up by science. Although autism has no bearing whatsoever on IQ, autistic people have harder times recognizing when they're being lied to, often leading for them to be more easily manipulable. Studies have also shown that autism is correlated with more difficulties in understanding the mechanisms of humor, as well as a predisposition to more absurd styles of humor, which explains Ryan's on-the-nose style and his wacky punchlines. Perhaps most pertinent to this situation, uh, one survey showed that over 50% of people who have autism regularly engage in binge drinking. So in light of these studies, am I saying that Ryan is not capable of controlling his own life? I am not. I am not qualified to make such a statement. That is not my opinion, and even if it were my opinion, I'm not in a position where that would matter at all. I am making the observation that Ryan and Josh's party god attitudes, their lusts for fame, as well as their frankly, seemingly somewhat naive natures. I don't know why many people deny I'm a celebrity when I have millions of followers and I get recognized literally all the time. Have been exploited by bad faith actors like one Mr. Michael Quinn, as well as fucking meme accounts. There are two prominent accounts cataloging the quote-unquote mythology of the Ryan and Josh saga. The account names are World of Sigmas and Based Jake, and can I just say, just a round of applause for those names. World of Sigmas is apparently in cahoots somehow or another with Michael Quinn, and they're currently, as of recording this, they're trying to uh, set up Josh Block on bachelor-style dates with young women for content, which just, thank you so much. Thank the, the people of Earth, thank you. And the, the latter, based Jake, has claimed on the subreddit multiple times that he, he's very concerned for, for World of T-Shirts health. And we really need to all band together. And he's tried to get him hospitalized a couple times. He's very concerned. But I'm just, I'm fucking sorry, dude. If there is a fame-crazed autistic man who is rapidly becoming a raging alcoholic and you put a camera on him going, oh no, guys, we need to band together and help this guy. It's absurd to do that and then claim you have his best interest in heart because just, because just somehow in your soul, you just wish it wasn't happening when you're actively encouraging it. Not by your words but with your actions, which are more important than your words. Just fucking scum of the earth running these accounts. Now, if you open Ryan's Instagram now, you'll notice viewership is way down from what it once was, and any comments that he gets are overwhelmingly negative. Ryan, what happened? I miss the old Ryan, which makes you wonder, why is Ryan Trout still making content in the first place? In this video, I'm going to be telling you how you can become famous. Let's get into it. Do something that's really funny, like something that, like, you really embarrass yourself to do that would make a lot of people laugh. And whenever I do good on something, people only say, oh, you're famous because of your autism. Like, they don't even give me actual credit for my talent. You know what I'm saying? I also do get discriminated against for my differences. So, yeah, I feel like it's important to say that because it is a real thing in the real world. So, and autistic people really are treated different and they're often 
sometimes thrown to the curb and treated different. Ryan isn't an idiot, but he's constantly babied in his comments. People talk to Ryan as if he has a developmental disability, which he does not. He has a social disability. So as he's been noting and calling out his entire life, he is a victim of discrimination. You're not changing what I'm doing on my channel. You're not going to tell me, oh, don't do this. Oh, that's so inappropriate. I'm 21 years old. However, his attitude toward haters, which he defines as someone who would vocalize any sort of disagreement with him. If people say they're my supporters, then they should support what I do. Not, not saying they'll support one thing, but not another. Like, it's kind of hypocritical, to be honest. Is that if you don't like the whole package, you can fuck off. And I understand why he's reached this conclusion with the experiences that he's had. But it also seems that this has caused him to write off some people who are vocalizing concern for him in good faith. I had a few crucial party haters in real life, so it was getting difficult to deal with them. Some commenters have either misunderstood this as a winner's mindset and encouraged it, and others, just basking in the chaos of it all, just encourage him to go farther with deleterious manic activities. Now do coke, now do ecstasy, now do heroin, etc, etc, etc. Over time, Ryan has developed a Kanye complex. Sincerely met with discrimination at every step, he withdraws inwards and starts to view all criticism, whether warranted or not, as necessarily discriminatory. This is a feedback loop. No matter what bent viewers have, it encourages Ryan to go deeper and deeper into the downward spiral that made him so entrancing to watch in the first place. As I've mentioned, this is sort of like the media military industrial complex, where they put pictures of gruesome war on the screen, which makes you go, oh, but you can't look away. And so they publish more and more war, and then more and more polarizing content. They have people argue about it on screen, which just encourages people to vote for the policies and the politicians that make these wars happen in the first place. The military defense defense contractors make money, the news makes money, everyone gets richer, we have fun watching it, the news has fun filming it, the military has fun making it. And in this frenzy, we're encouraged to forget that these are real people, these are real wars, real bombs, real families, Ryan and Josh, these are, like, these are somebody's kids. It's fun to watch. It's fun to watch. It's fun to watch someone else's life get a whole lot worse than yours because it makes your crappy, bleak, just like regular bad life, feel a little bit better. So did Instagram comments ruin Ryan Trout's life? Yes and no. Ryan's life isn't ruined. He fucked up a little and now he's a little fucked up. But that's life. It's hard enough being anyone, you know? It's hard growing up. It's hard becoming a man. And being neurodivergent can only intensify that process. But throw on top of that hundreds of thousands of screaming people you think are your fans telling you to be your worst self. I can't even imagine. So you have to have compassion for Ryan. As for what caused his so-called downfall, it's all speculation as an outsider to a degree. What we can say is that Michael Quinn is a douchebag who fed World of T-shirts alcohol and Ryan looked up to this. Uh, why can we say that? Because we have fucking video evidence. He did this all on camera. But there were traces of a substance abuse mindset seen in Ryan before Michael Quinn got to him. So to figure out exactly what the root cause of his downfall is, we'd be left to sift through bits and pieces of his life heard on live streams and on Reddit. But then the story of his downfall would stop being the sexy story about fame corrupting that we want it to be. And it would just be like the story of a guy with family issues that he needs to work through it's which a it's just not as entertaining and b i don't want to sift through a guy's family issues on a youtube video but one thing that we can't say for certain is that the cycle of hate perpetuated in ryan's comment section isn't helping anybody in the situation at all just like the pornography of war and the pornography of the absurd only serve to hold us back in our broader society hate or criticism with no substance behind them aside from some snide cynical groping for humor don't serve anyone and it's a pity to watch this cycle bleed over into and corrupt a young man's life but you could say eric aren't you making a video about and therefore profiting off this cycle just like everyone else yes i kind of am you have a good point but we can ignore this vicious cycle in society and let it perpetuate or we can talk about it and what a damn shame it is and how it seems to be immovable. If you open Ryan's Instagram as of recent, you'll find that he's been sober for a few months, but me when I'm getting too impulsive when I'm drunk, I'm out of control of my actions, man. 
honestly, it's doubtful that it'll stay that way based on the way he talks about his life as a party goer. Me, when I realized I never had a drinking problem, it turns out I drink responsibly in moderation. We don't know how the ballad of Ryan Trout ends, but like many things in life, if we want a hopeful ending, we'll have to imagine and create it ourselves. These haters of mine literally have nothing better to do with their time. Like, do something productive, make your own videos, or, um... America first! America first! America first! Don't ever use the word smart with me. Don't ever use that word. Oh, give me a break. Because you know what? Oh, yeah, um, stop trying to bring people down. Because people that bring other people down, they're weak. Would you who shut up, man? Listen, who is on your list, Joe? This who is, is on your so list. They might think they're being tough, but they're just weak people. Keep yapping, man. The people understand, Joe. But, like, there's no reason for you to be going under some random person's comments and just hating on them for no entire reason whatsoever. You want to run your mouth? We can be two consenting adults. We can finish it here. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. You want to do it now? I'd love to do it right now. Well, stand your butt up, then. You stand your butt up. Oh, hold on. Big oh, hold, stop it. Is that your Pardon. solution? Every pull it. No, no, sit down. What I do because it's my passion. Not because it's easy or hard. It's because I'm passionate about it. A passion is not whether it's easy or hard. It's, it's you do. It's what you do. You get a feeling about that. Like that's what I'm meant to do. You know, and that's social media with me. I've been doing this for years. Hey, in this video, me, the autistic boy, has a same voice of an angel. Isn't it a pity? This, in fact, is my calling. I'd like to apologize to Ryan Trout. Why isn't it a shame? Ryan, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all the hate. Now we break each other's hearts. I love you, man. I know you, man. People always want to just follow everybody else instead of thinking for themselves. That's why you see so many people going to parties and just doing the freaking normal, normal life. I see you way for the long time. I want to be able to do what I'm doing and inspire people to be themselves. I guess that is going to be. But they rather go out and drink and get high. And it's okay that people make mistakes. Give them Isn't time to learn. Hold them accountable, but don't ruin their life over it. Something takes so long. long. But how do I explain? When not too many people